Hey guys, I am having an extremely emotional day. It's Friday, August 6th, and today marks the beginning of the next chapter of my professional journey. And I've been kind of hinting at it over the past few weeks, but I am finally self-employed, <laughs> fun employed, unemployed. And I wanted to sit with all of you to not only open up about my next steps, but to share with you my post-residency medical journey, because it's been one that has been full of twists and turns, and ultimately it has been one in which has really defined for me the importance of knowing your self-worth. And I thought it would be really good for me to share it with all of you because A, I've been asked, and I've never felt like I could be truly as open, as honest as I wanted to be because of the circumstances of where I've been working in the past. Um, but B, I finally thought to myself, I want to bring you guys in because I never know who can be helped through this video. If somebody is sitting there in a room feeling depressed, sad, willing to give up on themselves, not thinking they're good enough, I hope my story is going to be one that inspires you to get yourself up, get off that couch, wash your face, put on your clothes, and get the hell out there and conquer what it is you want to conquer. And without further ado, I'm going to just jump in because there are too many examples in my life in which I just feel the need to share. My name, by the way, is Dr. Shereen Idris. I am a cosmetic board-certified dermatologist based in New York City. Um, and today I have launched my own office, Idris Dermatology, in Bryant Park. But it did not happen overnight. This is not a story that happened overnight. It's been 20 years in the making. So applying to dermatology is extremely competitive. And I thought I had no chance in hell in getting into a dermatology residency program. And so I applied to every single residency program out there, over a hundred programs. And I went into debt applying to over these hundred programs because it's very expensive. And I was completely lost because month after month, week after week, rejection after rejection, I got rejected by over 90, I think seven programs. Um, I just kept going despite that tidal wave of just, you know, you should just give up. And I was in Boston the week before Christmas, and the only program I had not heard back from was Tufts, and my flight was delayed because of the snowstorm. So I decided to jump in a cab from LaGuardia and go to Tufts Hospital. It was 4 p.m. Friday before Christmas. And I show up to the department, and the administrator there's jaw dropped. And I looked at them like, are you, why are you what's going on? And they were like, what do you mean you didn't get the invitation for the interview? And I never received anything. I was like, well, I haven't received anything because I haven't heard from you guys. I just want to know if you guys rejected me. So I'm here for you to reject me in person. <laughs> and the guy said, no, 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 you never answered us. And therefore I was going to cancel your application because you never answered us. And honestly, that is how I found out I got my interview at Tufts. And Tufts is where I ended up going to residency. And so someone may look at that and say, oh, you were just really lucky. But truthfully, I do think luck plays a role, but I really believe it's what you make of your luck and what you make of your time and what you make of your moments in life. And you grab life by the balls and you just go and throw yourself and put yourself forward. And I had over 98 rejections at this point. And this was the last program I had not heard from. And so take it from me, when you want something, just go after it and don't give up. And after residency, I thought to myself, okay, finally we're done. I went through the most difficult chapter of my life trying to get into Durham because at the time I was still relatively young. And I'm finally going to have my dream job. Now, mind you, I was living in Boston. My husband was living in New York and we were married long distance. So I didn't know anyone in New York City. And I ended up taking the first job that I got because the man who interviewed me offered me a pastrami sandwich. And I thought to myself, he's nice enough to offer me a sandwich without even knowing me. All right, either I'm a really cheap date or I'm super naive or 
I'm just gonna get, you know, jump in, you know, feet first. And I decided to jump in feet first. And that job was extremely challenging on many different levels because it was a job that was portrayed to be in New York City, but in fact, it was two hours deep into Long Island. So I was commuting four hours a day back and forth. Um, and I wanted to give up because I wanted to just be in New York and live with my husband, et cetera, after all those years. But my husband was like, you gave this man your word, keep going. And so I ended up practicing there for a year, meeting some incredible people. And through that experience, I met a guardian angel who I did not even know was my guardian angel until later. This woman was a drug rep. And so drug reps go from office to office and they ask if you need to get replenishments of certain things, if you need to go buy, like, especially in dermatology, if you need to buy syringes, if you need to buy like whatever, like um, injectables, you name it. And so this woman came in and was like, why are you working all the way out here if you live in New York City? And I looked at her and said, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I should be insulted or not, but I was like, I don't know. It was the first job I took. I mean, I love cosmetics, but this was it. So I'm giving this guy my time because I promised him and he, you know, he was nice to me. And she said, just please forward me your CV. And I said, but I don't know anybody. And she said, that doesn't matter. So she took my CV and forwarded it to one of the, if not the premier pioneer in cosmetic dermatology in New York. And this practice ended up calling me to let me know they received my CV. When I got the phone call, I was kind of shocked, not realizing how they got my information, et cetera. And I think they were taken aback because I didn't know who they were. And when we hung up, I never heard from them for a few weeks, months. It could have been indefinitely actually, because when I was back in New York, I decided like with Tufts, get my ass off the couch, stop watching 24, because I was watching 24 on Apple TV. And I got up and decided to walk to that office. And I showed up and I said, hi, you guys reached out to me a few weeks ago and I still haven't heard back. And at this point, the reason I did that was not necessarily because I really wanted that job, although for it, I was for very grateful. It was because I thought to myself, this was a golden opportunity from somebody I didn't know who's connecting me to somebody who's really a pioneer, super well respected in the field. Let me at least go in and say hello and see what the place is about. And so I went in and they were, of course, taken aback, <laughs> but I was used to this by now. And she was like, please come in. And we sat there for over an hour on an impromptu interview, one that I was not invited for, and they hired me on the spot. And the following years that followed were some of the most incredible years that I will forever cherish in my heart. And I will get a little bit emotional because they were incredible on many great things and they were incredible on many not so great things. And it is during that time that I experienced not only a miscarriage, but um, fertility issues, surgery, and I had to go through IVF. And the way this story, story twists and turns is that it was during this time where I lost sense of my self-worth. I was told very regularly that I am where I am because of the name on the door and that patients are seeing me because of where I work. And when I was seven weeks pregnant, I was terminated with nowhere to go. And so I left that practice, not only having learned the most incredible techniques and lessons of cosmetic dermatology, but also having learned invaluable information about life lessons that I will forever hold in my heart of things I never want to repeat to anyone else. But more importantly than that, when I left that practice, I was in one of the darkest places of my life. I had suffered a major professional loss in which I already felt like I was not worth it. And I was on top of it, finally pregnant, bringing a baby into this world, hoping to be able to hold on to the baby and freaking out internally about what kind of message was I going to give my future daughter. And so I decided I was going to start my practice. And this was four years ago. But 
another guardian angel came into play. And this person I had met four years prior. And she told Union Square, my now former practice, about me and my situation and how I had left and how I was going to open my own office. And they called me on the spot and said, would you want a place to stay while you're pregnant? And so I took the next job. And it was during the last four years. And I wrote some notes because I don't want to cry, but <laughs> I'm going to lose my sense of, um, I'm going to lose a little bit my sense of um, what I want to say. So I wrote it down. But I really ended up learning more about myself than anything. Um, and the biggest lesson I learned in the following, the past four years now, is that without yourself, you have nothing. And having a supportive community to back you can just push you to the moon and the stars and make you believe that anything is possible. Um, there's going to be people in this world that are, I'm going to read what I wrote, that are going to try to take credit for everything that you've done and assume that just because you work for them or are employed by them, that they own everything that you do. And I saw that firsthand at the practice years ago. But what's amazing is that I've learned that through that experience, never let anyone bully you into believing that you have been created by them and what you've created is theirs. And no matter who you are or where you are, you have to remember your own value and what you have to offer and that no one can own you or the fruits of your labor. And when I joined this last practice, I made a promise to myself to never allow anyone to bully me again. And when I changed my mindset, when I was finally able to hold on to who I was, the world opened up for me. I discovered social media. I discovered all of you. And it was, through, I'm fucking crying. And it was through all of you that I really was able to move forward. And never feel like I was owned or nothing without somebody else. And because of all of you, I have made a promise to myself on top of everything, to never get intimidated by anyone and to go full force and follow my dreams. And I hope this video, which is so ridiculous that I'm crying in, is a video that somebody out there is watching to know that no one should ever be intimidated to follow their dreams. And that there's enough success in this world to go around. That's not all over my face. There's enough success in this world for everyone to go around. And if some people don't see it or some people try to hold you back, fuck them and just keep going. Um, and the truth is I'm not done. I'm still learning. I'm learning every day, but I have something today that I didn't have four years ago. And today I have a voice and I'm finally free to speak what happened. And I wanted to be finally as open and honest with all of you and share all of this with all of you in a, in really, in, in hope of really helping somebody who's watching this, who might really need this message. And it's an incredibly emotional moment for me. And I'm so thrilled to be charting this new path with all of you and so excited to announce that I will be finally opening my own practice in New York City in September, a practice that has been no joke 20 years in the making, and a practice in which I can't wait to pour my heart into and not just make people get rid of a blemish or a pimple or a wrinkle, but to really help them know their own self-worth because ultimately what I do is all about knowing your own self-worth. And it's ironic that I lost my own along the way, but I really do hope that whoever's watching this realizes that the sky is the limit when you believe in yourself 
and cherish your community, your people who are on your side and who support you and support them in return. And the world is your oyster. So anyway, um, thank you for watching <laughs> uh, these 15 minutes. I am, I cry, I've been crying all day, so I'm not surprised I cried again. But um, yeah, I'm Dr. Shereen Idris. It's a little bit of a different Saturday morning. And I will catch you guys next Saturday with another topic of the day, probably related to skincare. <laughs> and yeah, I will see you guys soon. Have a beautiful Saturday. And I can't wait to show you guys the space once it is done. Take care.